Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future by Father Seraphim Rose. Chapter 5. The Quote, New Religious Consciousness. The Spirit of the Eastern Cults in the 1970s. The three kinds of, quote, Christian meditation described above are only the beginning. In general, it may be said that the influence of Eastern religious ideas and practices upon the once Christian West has reached astonishing proportions in the decade of the 1970s. In particular, America, which barely two decades ago was still religiously, quote, provincial, save in a few large cities, its spiritual horizon largely limited to Protestantism and Roman Catholicism has seen a dazzling proliferation of Eastern and pseudo-Eastern religious cults and movements. The history of this proliferation can be traced from the restless disillusionment of the post-World War II generation, which first manifested itself in the 1950s in the empty protest and moral libertinism of the quote, beat generation, whose interest in Eastern religions was at first rather academic and mainly a sign of dissatisfaction with quote, Christianity. There followed a second generation, that of the quote, hippies of the 1960s, with its quote, rock music and psychedelic drugs and search for, quote, increased awareness at any cost. Now young Americans plunged wholeheartedly into political protest movements, notably against the war in Vietnam, on the one hand, and the fervent practice of Eastern religions on the other. Indian gurus, Tibetan lamas, Japanese Zen masters, and other Eastern, quote, sages came to the West and found a host of ready disciples who made them successful beyond the dreams of the westernized swamis of preceding generations, and young people traveled to the ends of the world, even to the heights of the Himalayas, to find the wisdom or the teacher or the drug that would bring them the, quote, peace and, quote, freedom they sought. In the 1970s, a third generation has succeeded the, quote, hippies, outwardly quieter, with fewer, quote, demonstrations, and generally less flamboyant behavior. This generation has gone more deeply into Eastern religions, whose influence now has become much more pervasive than ever before. For many of this newer generation, the religious, quote, search has ended. They have found an Eastern religion to their liking and are now seriously occupied in practicing it. A number of Eastern religious movements have already become, quote, native to the West, especially in America. There are now Buddhist monasteries composed entirely of Western converts, and for the first time there have appeared American and other Western gurus and Zen masters. Let us look at just a few pictures, descriptions of actual events in the early and mid-1970s, which illustrate the dominance of Eastern ideas and practices among many young Americans, who are only the, quote, avant-garde of the youth of the entire world. The first two pictures show a more superficial involvement with Eastern religions, and are perhaps only a leftover from the generation of the 1960s. The last two reveal the deeper involvement characteristic of the 1970s. Section 1. Hare Krishna in San Francisco. Quote, On a street bordering Golden Gate Park in the Haight-Ashbury section of San Francisco stood the Krishna Consciousness Temple. Above the entrance to the temple were two-foot-high wooden letters, Hare Krishna. The large storefront windows were covered with red and orange patterned blankets. Quote, The sounds of chanting and music filled the street. Inside there were dozens of brightly colored paintings on the wall, thick red rugs on the floor, and a smoky haze in the air. 
This smoke was incense, an element of the ceremony in progress. The people in the room were softly chanting barely audible Sanskrit words. The room was nearly full, with about 50 people who all appeared to be young sitting on the floor. Assembled in front were about 20 persons wearing long, loose-fitting orange and saffron robes with white paint on their noses. Many of the men had shaved their heads except for a ponytail. The women with them also had white paint on their noses and small red marks on their foreheads. The other young persons in the room appeared no different from the other denizens of the Height Ashbury, costumed in headbands, long hair, beards, and an assortment of rings, bells, and beads, and they were also enthusiastically participating in the ceremony. The ten or so persons sitting in the rear appeared to be first-time visitors. Quote, the chanting ceremony, mantra, increased in tempo and in volume. Two girls in long saffron robes were now dancing to the chant. The leader of the chant began to cry the words of the chant in Sanskrit. The entire group repeated the words and attempted to maintain the leader's intonation and rhythm. Many of the participants played musical instruments. The leader was beating a hand drum in time with his chanting. The two swaying dancing girls were playing finger cymbals. One man was blowing a seashell, another was beating a tambourine. On the walls of the temple were over a dozen paintings of scenes from the Bhagavad Gita. Quote, the music and the chanting grew very loud and fast. The drum was ceaselessly pounding. Many of the devotees started personal shouts, hands upstretched amidst the general chant. The leader knelt in front of a picture of the group spiritual master on a shrine near the front of the room. The chanting culminated in a loud crescendo and the room became silent. The celebrants knelt with their heads to the floor as the leader said a short prayer in Sanskrit. Then he shouted five times, All glories to the assembled devotees, which the others repeated before they sat up. End quote. This is one of the typical worship services of the quote, Krishna Consciousness Movement, which was founded in America in 1966 by an Indian ex businessman, A.C. Bhakadvedanta in order to bring the Hindu discipline of Bhakti yoga to the disoriented and searching young people of the West. The earlier phase of interest in Eastern religions in the 1950s and early 1960s had emphasized intellectual investigation without much personal involvement. This newer phase demands wholehearted participation. Bhakti yoga means uniting oneself to one's chosen, quote, God by loving and worshiping him, and changing one's whole life in order to make this one's central occupation. Through the non-rational means of worship, chanting, music, dance, devotion, the mind is, quote, expanded, and, quote, Krishna consciousness is attained, which, if enough people will do it, is supposed to end the troubles of our disordered age and usher in a new age of peace, love, and unity. The bright robes of the quote Krishnas become a familiar sight in San Francisco, especially on the day every year when the immense idol of their quote God was wheeled through Golden Gate Park to the ocean attended by all the signs of Hindu devotion, a typical scene of pagan India, but something new for, quote, Christian America. From San Francisco, the movement has spread to the rest of America and to Western Europe. By 1974, there were 54 Krishna temples throughout the world, many of them near colleges and universities.
members of the movement are almost all very young. The recent death of the founder of the movement has raised questions about its future, and indeed its membership, although very visible, has been rather small in number. As a, quote, sign of the times, however, the meaning of the movement is clear and should be very disturbing to Christians. Many young people today are looking for a, quote, God to worship, and the most blatant form of paganism is not too much for them to accept. Section 2. Guru Maharajiji at the Houston Astrodome. By the fall of 1973, a number of Eastern gurus of the newer school, led by Maharishi, Mahesh Yogi, with his, quote, TM, had come to the West and gathered a following, only to fade from the public eye after a brief reign in the glare of publicity. Guru Maharajiji was the most spectacular, and one might say, outrageous of these gurus. Fifteen years old, he had already been proclaimed to be, quote, God. His family, mother and three brothers, was the, quote, holy family, and his organization, the, quote, divine light mission, had communities, ashrams, all over America. His 80,000 followers, quote, premies, like the followers of Krishna, were expected to give up worldly pleasures and meditate in order to attain an, quote, expanded consciousness, which made them perfectly peaceful, happy, and, quote, blissed out, a state of mind in which everything seems beautiful and perfect just the way it is. In a special initiation at which they, quote, receive the knowledge, disciples are shown an intense light and three other signs within themselves, which later they are able to meditate on by themselves. In addition to this, quote, knowledge, disciples are united in believing that Maharajiji is the, quote, Lord of the universe, who has come to inaugurate a new age of peace for mankind. For three days in November 1973, the, quote, divine light mission rented the Houston Astrodome, an immense sports arena entirely covered by a dome, in order to stage, quote, the most holy and significant event in the history of mankind. Quote, preemies from all over the world were to gather to worship their, quote, God and begin the conversion of America through the mass media, whose representatives were carefully invited, to the same worship, thus beginning the new age of mankind. Appropriately, the event was called, quote, Millennium 73. Typical of Maharajaji's convinced disciples was Rennie Davis, leftist demonstrator of the 1960s and one of the, quote, Chicago 7, accused of inciting riots at the 1968 Democratic National Convention. He spent the summer of 1973 giving press conferences and speeches to whoever would listen, telling America, quote, He is the greatest event in history, and we sleep through it. I feel like shouting in the streets. If we knew who he was, we would crawl across America on our hands and knees to rest our heads at his feet, end quote. Indeed, the worship of Mahara Jiji is expressed in a full prostration before him with one's head to the ground, together with a Sanskrit phrase of adoration. A tremendous ovation greeted his appearance at, quote, Millennium 73. He sat atop a tall throne, crowned by an immense golden, quote, crown of Krishna. As the Astrodome scoreboard flashed the word, quote, G-O-D, young American, quote, preemies wept for joy. Others danced on the stage. The band played, quote, the Lord of the Universe, adapted from an old Protestant hymn. All this, let us say again, in, quote, Christian America,
this is already becoming something beyond mere worship of pagan, quote, gods. Until a very few years ago, such worship of a living man would have been inconceivable in any, quote, Christian country. Now, it has become an ordinary thing for many thousands of religious, quote, seekers in the West. Here we have already had a preview of the worship of Antichrist at the end of the age, the one who will sit in the temple of God, setting himself forth as God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 Quote, Millennium 73 seems to have been the peak of Maharaji's influence. As it was, only 15,000 followers attended it much less than expected, and there were no, quote, miracles or special signs to indicate the, quote, new age had actually begun. A movement so dependent on media publicity and so much bound up with the popular taste of a particular generation, the music at, quote, Millennium 73 was composed mostly of the popular songs of the, quote, counterculture of the 1960s can expect to go out of fashion rather quickly, and the recent marriage of Maharajiji to his secretary has further weakened his popularity as a, quote, god. Other of the, quote, spiritual movements of our times seem to be less subject to the whims of popular fashion and more indicative of the depth of the influence which Eastern religions are now attaining in the West. Section 3. Tantric Yoga in the Mountains of New Mexico In a grassy meadow at the 7,500 foot elevation in the Jemez Mountains of northern New Mexico, a thousand young Americans, most of them between the ages of 20 and 25, gathered for 10 days of spiritual exercises at the time of the summer solstice in June 1973. They arise at 4 a.m. every day and assemble before sunrise, wrapped in blankets against the morning frost, to sit on the ground in rows in front of an outdoor stage. Together, they begin the day with a mantra in Punjabi, a Sanskrit language, in order to, quote, tune in to the spiritual practices that are to follow. First, there are several hours of kundalini yoga, a series of strenuous physical exercises, chanting, and meditation aimed at acquiring conscious control of body and mind processes and preparing one for, quote, God realization. Then, there is the ceremony of the raising of two flags, the American flag and the flag of the, quote, Aquarian nation. This, quote, nation being the peaceful people of the, quote, Aquarian age, or millennium for which this cult is preparing, accompanied by the singing of, quote, God bless America, and a prayer for the American nation. After a vegetarian meal, typical of almost all the new cults, and lectures on spiritual and practical subjects, all prepare for a long session of tantric yoga. Tantric yoga has been little heard of and almost never practiced in the West up until now. All authorities agree that it is an extremely dangerous exercise, practiced always by male and female together that evokes a very powerful psychic energy, requiring close supervision and control. Supposedly, there is only one master of tantric yoga living on the earth at any one time. The exercises at, quote, solstice in New Mexico were led by the, quote, great tantric of our days, Yogi Bahajan. All dressed identically in white, sit down in long, straight lines, men opposite women, packed shoulder to shoulder, down the lines and back to back with the next line. About 10 double lines stretch out from the stage, each 75 feet long. 
assistants make sure the lines are perfectly straight to assure the proper, quote, flow of the yogi, quote, magnetic field. The chanting of mantras begins with special chants invoking a departed guru who is Yogi Bahajan's, quote, special protector. The yogi himself, an impressive man, six feet four inches tall with a great black beard, dressed in white robe and turban, appears and begins to speak of his dream for, quote, a new beautiful creative nation of America, which can be built by the spiritual preparation of people today. The tantric exercises, which are a key in this preparation, transform people from their usual, quote, individual consciousness to, quote, group consciousness, and finally to, quote, universal consciousness. The exercises begin. They are extremely difficult, involving strong physical effort and pain, and evoking strong emotions of fear, anger, love, etc. Everyone must do exactly the same thing at the same time. Difficult positions are held motionlessly for long periods. Complicated mantras and exercises must be executed in precise coordination with one's partner and with everyone in one's own row. Each separate exercise may take from 31 to 61 minutes. Individual awareness disappears in the intense group activity, and strong after-effects are felt. Physical exhaustion and sometimes temporary paralysis, emotional exhaustion, or elation. Further, since no one at, quote, solstice is allowed to converse with anyone else, there is no opportunity to make rational sense of the experience by sharing it with others. The aim is to effect a radical change in one's self. Following afternoon classes in such subjects as oriental arts of self-defense, practical medicine and nutrition, and the running of an ashram, there is an evening session, after another meal, of, quote, spiritual singing. Sanskrit mantras are sung to current folk and, quote, rock music. Quote, rock festival and, quote, joyful worship in a foreign tongue are joined together, part of Yogi Bahajan's effort to make his religion, quote, Native American. The religion described above is a modern adaptation of the Sikh religion of northern India, joined to several practices of yoga, called the, quote, 3HO, Healthy, Happy, Holy Organization. It was founded in 1969 in Los Angeles by Yogi Bahajan, who originally came to America to take up a teaching position and only incidentally became a religious leader when he discovered that his courses in yoga appealed to the, quote, hippies of Southern California. Combining the, quote, spiritual search of the, quote, hippies with his own knowledge of Indian religions, he formed an, quote, American religion that differs from most Eastern religions by its emphasis on this worldly practical life, like the Sikhs in India, who are mostly a merchant class. Marriage and a stable home life responsible employment and social service are required of all members. Since its foundation in 1969, quote, 3HO has expanded to over a hundred ashrams, communities which serve as gathering places for non-resident participants, in American cities, as well as a few in Europe and Japan. Although externally it is quite distinct from the other new Eastern cults, full members of the cult formally become Sikhs and thereafter wear the characteristic Sikh turban and white clothing. Quote, 3HO is one with them in appealing to ex, quote, hippies, making an, quote, expanded or, quote, universal or, quote, transcendental consciousness its central aim,
and in seeing itself as a spiritual, quote, avant-garde that will bring about a new millennial age, which most groups see in astrological terms as the, quote, Aquarian age. As a cult that advocates a relatively normal life in society, quote, 3HO is still just as much a, quote, sign of the times as the Hindu cults that promote an obvious, quote, escapism. It is preparing for a, quote, healthy, happy, and holy America, totally without reference to Christ. When convinced and, quote, happy, Americans speak calmly about God and their religious duties without mention of Christ, one can no longer doubt that the, quote, post-Christian age has come in earnest. Section 4. Zen Training in Northern California In the forested mountains of Northern California, in the shadow of immense Mount Shasta, a, quote, holy mountain to the original Indian inhabitants, and long a center of occult activities and settlements, which are now once again on the increase. There has been since 1970 a Zen Buddhist monastery. Long before 1970, there had been Zen temples in the larger cities of the West Coast, where Japanese had settled, and there had been attempts to start Zen monasteries in California. But, quote, Shasta Abbey, as it is called, is the first successful American Zen monastery. In Zen Buddhism, a, quote, monastery is primarily a training school for Zen, quote, priests, both male and female. In Shasta Abbey, the atmosphere is very orderly and businesslike. Visitors, who are allowed to take guided tours at restricted times, but may not fraternize with the residents, find the monks or trainees in traditional black robes and with shaved heads. Everyone seems to know exactly what he is doing, and a clear sense of seriousness and dedication is present. The training itself is a strict five-year, or more, program which allows graduates to become, quote, priests and teachers of Zen and to conduct Buddhist ceremonies. As at secular schools, trainees pay a fee for room and board, $175 a month, payable in advance for each month, already a means of weeding out unserious candidates. But the life itself is that of, quote, monks rather than students. Strict rules govern dress and behavior, vegetarian meals are eaten in silence communally, no visitors or idle conversations are allowed. Life centers about the meditation hall, where trainees eat and sleep in addition to meditating, and no non-Zen religious practices are allowed. The life is a very intense and concentrated one, and every event of daily life, even washing and toilet, has its Buddhist prayer, which is recited silently. Although the abbey belongs to a, quote, reformed Soto Zen sect, to emphasize its independence from Japan and its adaptation to American conditions of life, rites and ceremonies are in the Japanese Zen tradition. There is the ceremony of becoming a Buddhist, equinox rites celebrating the, quote, transformation of the individual, the ceremonial, quote, feeding of hungry ghosts, remembrance of the dead, the, quote, Founder's Day, ceremony of expressing gratitude to the transmitters of Zen down to the present master, the festival of Buddha's enlightenment, and others. Homage is paid by bowing down before images of Buddha, but the primary emphasis of the teaching is on the, quote, Buddha nature within one. The Zen master at Shasta Abbey is a Westerner and a woman, Buddhist practice permitting this. Jayu Kennett, an English woman born of Buddhist parents in 1924, who received Buddhist training in several traditions in the Far East and, quote, ordination at a Soto Zen monastery in Japan. She came to America in 1969 and founded the monastery the next year with a few young followers. 
Since then, the community has grown rapidly, attracting mostly young men and women in their 20s. The reason for the success of this monastery, apart from the natural appeal of Zen to a generation sick of rationalism and mere outward learning, seems to lie in the mystique of, quote, authentic transmission of the Zen experience and tradition, which the, quote, abbess provides through her training and certification in Japan. Her personal qualities as a foreigner and a born Buddhist who is still in close touch with the contemporary mind, with a very, quote, American practicality, seem to seal her influence with the young American convert generation of Buddhists. The aim of Zen training at Shasta Abbey is to fill all of life with, quote, pure Zen. Daily meditation, at times for as much as eight or ten hours in one day, is the center of a concentrated, intense religious life that leads, supposedly, to, quote, lasting peace and harmony of body and mind. Emphasis is on, quote, spiritual growth, and the publications of the Abbey, a bi-monthly journal and several books by the Abbess, reveal a high degree of awareness of spiritual posing and fakery. The Abbey is opposed to the adoption of Japanese national as opposed to Buddhist customs, warns of the dangers of, quote, guru hopping and falsely worshiping the Zen master, forbids astrology, fortune telling, even the I Ching, astral traveling, and all other psychic and occult activities, mocks the academic and intellectual as opposed to the experiential approach to Zen, and emphasizes hard work and rigorous training with the banishing of all illusions and fantasies about oneself and, quote, spiritual life. Discussions on, quote, spiritual matters by young Zen, quote, priests, as recorded in the Abbey's journal, sound, in their sober and knowledgeable tone, remarkably like discussions among young, serious, orthodox converts and monks. In intellectual formation and outlook, these young Buddhists seem quite close to many of our Orthodox converts. The young Orthodox Christian of today might well say, quote, There, but for the grace of God, I myself might be. So convincingly authentic is the spiritual outlook of this Zen monastery, which offers almost everything the young religious seeker of today might desire, except, of course, Christ, the true God, and the eternal salvation which He alone can give. The monastery teaches a Buddhism that is not, quote, a cold and distant discipline, but is filled with, quote, love and compassion. Contrary to the usual expositions of Buddhism, the abbess emphasizes that the center of Buddhist faith is not ultimate, quote, nothingness, but a living, quote, God which she claims to be the esoteric Buddhist teaching. Quote, the secret of Zen is to know for certain, for oneself, that the cosmic Buddha exists. A true master is he or she who does not waver in his certainty of and love for the cosmic Buddha. I was overjoyed when I finally knew for certain that he existed. The love and gratitude in me knew no bounds nor have I ever felt such love as came forth from him, so I want everyone else to feel it too." End quote. There are presently some 70 priest trainees at Shasta Abbey and its, quote, branch priorities, chiefly in California. The monastery is now in a state of rapid expansion, both on its grounds and in its, quote, mission to the American people. There is a growing movement of lay Buddhists who make the abbey their religious center and often come there, together with psychologists and other interested persons, on meditation retreats of varying lengths. With their publications, counseling, and instruction in California cities, a projected children's school and a home for the elderly, Shasta Abbey is indeed progressing in its aim of, quote, growing Zen Buddhism in the West.
towards Christianity, the abbess and her disciples have a condescending attitude. They respect the Philokalia and other Orthodox spiritual texts, recognizing Orthodoxy as the closest to them among, quote, Christian bodies, but regard themselves as being, quote, beyond such things as theologies, doctrinal disputes, and isms, end quote, which they regard as not belonging to, quote, true religion. Journal, January through February, 1978, page 54. Zen has, in fact, no theological foundation, relying entirely on, quote, experience, and thus falling into the, quote, pragmatic fallacy that has already been noted earlier in this book, in the chapter on Hinduism, quote, if it works, it must be true and good. Zen, without any theology, is no more able than Hinduism to distinguish between good and evil spiritual experiences. It can only state what seems to be good because it brings, quote, peace and, quote, harmony, as judged by the natural powers of the mind and not by any revelation. Everything else it rejects as more or less illusory. Zen appeals to the subtle pride, so widespread today, of those who think they can save themselves, and thus have no need of any savior outside themselves. Of all of today's Eastern religious currents, Zen is probably the most sophisticated intellectually and the most sober spiritually. With its teaching of compassion and a loving, quote, cosmic Buddha, it is perhaps as high a religious ideal as the human mind can attain. Its tragedy is precisely that it has no Christ in it, and thus no salvation, and its very sophistication and sobriety effectively prevent its followers from seeking salvation in Christ. In its quiet, compassionate way, it is perhaps the saddest of all the reminders of the quote, post-Christian times in which we live. Non-Christian quote, spirituality is no longer a foreign importation in the West. It has become a native American religion, putting down its deep roots into the consciousness of the West. Let us be warned from this. The religion of the future will not be a mere cult or sect, but a powerful and profound religious orientation which will be absolutely convincing to the mind and heart of modern man. Section 5. The New, quote, Spirituality versus Christianity. Other examples of the new Eastern cults in the West could be multiplied. Each year finds new ones, or new transformations of old ones. In addition to the overtly religious cults, the last decade especially has seen an increase of secular, quote, consciousness cults. As one popular news magazine calls them, U.S. News and World Report, February 16th, 1976, page 40. These, quote, mind therapy groups include the, quote, Earnhard Seminars Training, established in 1971, quote, Rolfing, quote, Silva Mind Control, and various forms of, quote, encounter and, quote, biofeedback, all of which offer a, quote, release of tensions and a, quote, tapping of the hidden capabilities of man expressed in a more or less plausible 20th century, quote, scientific jargon. One is also reminded of other, quote, consciousness movements that have become less fashionable today, from, quote, Christian science to, quote, science of mind to, quote, Scientology. All these movements are incompatible with Christianity. Orthodox Christians must be told absolutely to stay away from them. Why do we speak so categorically? Number one, these movements have no foundation in Christian tradition or practice, but are purely the product of Eastern pagan religions or of modern spiritism, more or less diluted and often presented as, quote, non-religious. They not only teach wrongly, not in accordance with Christian doctrine about spiritual life, 
they also lead one, whether through pagan religious experiences or psychic experiments, into a wrong spiritual path whose end is spiritual and psychic disaster, and ultimately the loss of one's soul eternally. Number two, specifically, the experience of, quote, spiritual quietness, which is given by various kinds of meditation, whether without specific religious content, as in claimed by, quote, TM, some forms of yoga and Zen, and the secular cults, or with pagan religious content, as in Hare Krishna, the, quote, divine light mission, quote, 31-10, etc., is an entrance to the, quote, cosmic spiritual realm, where the deeper side of the human personality enters into contact with actual spiritual beings. These beings, in man's fallen state, are first of all demons, or fallen spirits, who are closest to man. Zen Buddhist meditators themselves, despite all their cautions about spiritual, quote, experiences, describe their encounters with these spirits, mixed with human fantasies, all the while emphasizing that they are not, quote, clinging to them. Number three, the, quote, initiation into experiences of the psychic realm, which the, quote, consciousness cults provide, involves one in something beyond the conscious control of the human will. Thus, once having been, quote, initiated, it is often a very difficult thing to untangle oneself from undesirable psychic experiences. In this way, the, quote, new religious consciousness becomes an enemy of Christianity that is much more powerful and dangerous than any of the heresies of the past, when experience is emphasized above doctrine, the normal Christian safeguards which protect one against the attacks of fallen spirits are removed or neutralized, and the passiveness and, quote, openness which characterize the new cults literally open one up to be used by demons. Studies of the experiences of many of the, quote, consciousness cults show that there is a regular progression in them from experiences which at first are, quote, good or, quote, neutral to experiences which become strange and frightening and in the end clearly demonic. Even the purely physical side of psychic disciplines like yoga are dangerous because they are derived from and dispose one towards the psychic attitudes and experiences which are the original purpose of yoga practice. The seductive power of the, quote, new religious consciousness is so great today that it can take possession of one even while he believes that he is remaining a Christian. This is true not only of those who indulge in the superficial syncretisms or combinations of Christianity and Eastern religions, which have been mentioned above, it is true also of an increasing number of people who regard themselves as fervent Christians. The profound ignorance of true Christian spiritual experience in our times is producing a false Christian, quote, spirituality, whose nature is closely kin to the, quote, new religious consciousness. In chapter 7, we will take a long and careful look at the widespread current of, quote, Christian spirituality today. In it, we will see the frightening prospect of a, quote, new religious consciousness taking possession of well-meaning Christians, even Orthodox Christians, to such an extent that we cannot help but think of the spirituality of the contemporary world in the apocalyptic terms of the, quote, strong delusion that will deceive almost all of mankind before the end of the age. To this subject we shall return at the end of this book. This concludes part five of the reading of Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future by Father Seraphim Rose. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check out my social media in the description. Thank you, and God bless.